challenge. I cannot wait for this event. I mean, uh, a lot of people may have downplayed it at first considering it is $15,000 for first place in the actual tournament on Sunday, but these players are all getting hyped up for this single event. So, of course, what we do have set up is all four healers from the four teams coming to this event set up, and we're going to do a draft-style pick, and they are not allowed to pick any of the members from their roster. So it's going to kind of change things up a little bit. should be interesting to see what these players do come up with. But first, we're going to give you a little rundown of what's going to be going on here in Orlando for the weekend. And, of course, check it out. We do have the WoW Weekend Pass available again. For $10, you will get that HD stream 1.7 megabytes down. It looks like you're actually playing the game, and also it comes with that DVR functionality, meaning you can pause or rewind if you miss a little bit of action and see exactly how it went down. And once you purchase it, it's just a few clicks away from getting it ready and watching some amazing WoW this weekend. Yeah, a little testimonial of it. We actually cast off the HD stream in the center of our <laughs> console, so it's great. And also, if you miss any of the action, you can go to MMO-Champion.com, GameBattles.com, MLGPro.com, and of course, GotFrag.com. And also on GotFrag, we do have a lot of different stats and things put up, a lot of interesting information from the tournaments over the years, so make sure you go check that out. And as always, we do have that Ask the Cast thread up on the gen WoW General Discussion, where if you have any questions for Jared or I, and we get a little bit of free time, we will go to that thread and try to get, answer a few questions when we can. Now, of course, as usual, this is going to be a 3v3 tournament. Uh, the players are not allowed to use any UI mods. Um, however, we are changing the rules a little bit since there is going to only be four teams in each of the tournaments. Uh, we're not going to be doing the round robin play. Uh, we're going to be doing best of seven in a double elimination bracket. And also, if we get a map more than three times in a series of seven, we will ask the players to leave the arena and requeue until we get a different map so we can make sure there's a little diversity in map selection. And as Jared said earlier, we are playing for $1,000 to the winning team of the All-Star Challenge. And tomorrow on Championship Sunday, the first place team will go home with $15,000. And there are no second, third, or fourth place prize, so it's time to put up. All right, and the four teams we do have at this event, things are always changing when it comes to competitive World of Warcraft. Uh, the team formerly known as Check Six will now be here under that Complexity banner. They will be Complexity Black. Once again, we will have Complexity Red. Button Bashers have come over once again, and we're very excited to see those guys play. And now we have SK and EG combining, and I guess we're going to call it Skiji is Ski what we're going to. Yeah, yeah, I believe we're going to go with Skiji for the game, uh, for the team name. But we do have the four healers set up at a table with our tournament director, Ryan Moore, and we'll be going over in just a moment for the first pick. So like we said, we do have the healers of the teams that are going to be making these selections. Um, there is an odd number of players here. Um, some teams have brought three, some teams have brought four, so uh, two of the teams will have four players. Yep. And going in at pick order, it will be SK or Ski G first. Second, it will be Complexity Black. Third, Complexity Red. And fourth, Button Bashers. Then it will go in reverse order from fourth to first. And of course, like as Jared said, there's going to be four players on SKEG and Complexity Red. So, and right now we do have Ryan Moore sitting down with the healer, so we're going to go ahead and head over and get the first pick ready. Hey, I'm here for the first pick of the MLG All-Star Tournament. Um, I'm just going to get right into it. The first captain is Collective, so I'm going to go to him and, and see who he wants. All right, you got the first pick, Collective. Who are you going with? Uh, Twix. All right. He's, he's going with Twix. Twix right, is the first like, pick. All right, sounds like we just had so I'll send it over to you guys. Skiji picking Twix. So that's going to put Skiji. Well, we're actually going to give them new team names whenever they do come back with their comps. But Collective, normally playing a Shaman, going to go with Twix first, uh, mostly known for playing a BM Hunter and PhD, and of course that Beast Cleave setup that we've seen. So that already puts him with a Shaman and a BM Hunter, so we can uh, go ahead and expect that they're going to go for a little Gibbs style comp. Yeah, and, and we know that Collective has played Elemental in the past also. So you're looking at uh, the depth of a Resto Shaman or an Elemental Shaman plus that Hunter. I mean, there's a lot of things that they can do. And the greatest part about this tournament is you can't really prepare for what you're going to face. 
All right, coming up next in picks, we will have Complexity Black, and of course their healer being Toes. Uh, he has played a Priest, he's played a Paladin. I've even, I think he's played pretty much every healer at this point. And actually, while they were practicing, I saw him playing a few different DPS classes. So there's no telling what these guys are going to try to run, but Toes definitely regarded as one of the greatest healers out there in the American scene right now. So expect for him to come across and uh, pull out something strong. So in just a moment here, we're going to be going over to Ryan, but we're going to give them about three minutes to make their decision before they're forced to go ahead with their pick. Yeah, because we haven't, these aren't pre-selected and, you know, we're just running through a script. I mean, these guys are picking their players on the fly. They only have three minutes to do it. And remember, Toes cannot pick his teammate Flex, even though he still, still is available in this pool. They are forced to pick somebody off of their team roster. So if you were a captain, uh, what kind of player are you looking as? Let's say you're a healer, right? Diversity. That's, I Diversity. mean, for your first pick, you're really looking for somebody that can probably multi-class because you're still not set on who you're actually going to get for that last pick. So you want to make sure you leave yourself a few options. And honestly, one of the most diverse players out there would be Flex in that DPS slot. Uh, we've seen him play Enhancement Shaman. We've seen him play DK and also seen him on a Prop Warrior. So really, he's one of the strong members out there. And that's, I honestly think that's what they're going to be going for. And also, Warlocks really, they're easy to set up with another DPS. And I think it'll be pretty strong and easy for them to go with. So you have a Zale out there, you know, good picks like that that can really keep teams going. Yeah, definitely. I mean, unless you're set on one specific comp, uh, such as, you know, if someone wants to run RMP, they're, you know, gunning for RMP, um, that first pick can be anything. I mean, uh, being the first person, obviously, Collective picks Twix, which is kind of an odd pick, you know. It, he can mostly play just Hunter. So uh, it's going to come down to when he gets that, that last pick. I mean, he might get, you know, it's last choice. All right, let's go ahead and head over to our tournament director, Ryan Moore, with our second pick. All right, I'm um, ready for the second pick of the draft, which is uh, Toes. So I'm going to find out who he wants. All right, Toes, second pick, who are you going with? Uh, I'm going to go with Snuts. He's going with Snuts. Snuts. All right, and it looks like that Toes is going to go ahead and pick up Snuts. Snuts, uh, he's been playing a lot of different classes. I actually seen him playing a DK earlier, but really known for playing a Warlock. So already we have kind of a Paladin Warlock setup. And as we said, that's one of those diverse classes that really can meld with just about anything. Yeah, and where Toes is also a, uh, a very uh, dynamic healer. I mean, look at the amount of comps you can make just with those two characters. All right, coming up in our next pick, it will be Complexity Red, and that will be the team captain of Soda making that decision. Soda playing a Druid, a Priest as well, also another diverse healer, and now we're going to have to wait and see, and I'm still surprised. Flex is still in the pool, but of course his team pick and last, and uh, Skiji actually going with Twix, so we'll have to see what they actually do decide to go for. Now, in Soda's position, he, he's more used to playing an RMP, or we actually saw them try to run uh, Rogue Mage Druid in the past. What do you honestly think he's going to be going for here? Well, it all depends on his pick. I mean, uh, I mean, you can't count flex out of any team's pick. Um, I know that uh, uh, Button Bashers was kind of joking around that they want to pick him because of a prot warrior. You know, those guys think that prot warriors right now are outstanding. Um, so I, I'm going to guess that he's going to go with flex next. And also, you got to remember, we do have the Korean team of Button Bashers here, so Orange Marmalade in here and in this pool as well. And now, one of the big questions that a lot of people were worried about is that language barrier, Orange Marmalade being the only person that can speak English for the team. But, I mean, we've seen uh, this team work together. Now it'll be interesting to see how, they, how if they're able to meld with these American teams and pull something out today. Yeah, well, it's uh, the language barrier isn't too bad since, I mean, these guys have been playing WoW for five years now. <laughs> Um, and even with the first event that we saw at Button Bashers at, that uh, WWI in Paris, they were explaining why they chose certain talents to all the players, and, you know, it wasn't that bad of a language barrier. Okay, so we do have our first two teams making a pick so far. Skiji going with Twix, and then we did, did have Toes actually pick up Snuts, and now we're going to be waiting for Complexity Red and Soda to make their decision. And remember, after we do go through the first four picks, it will go in reverse order, meaning Button Bashers will be first for their final pick, and then we will have a couple teams with four players. So we'll be going for a little bit, and as soon as we finish up this draft, we're going to take a short commercial break, and we will go right into the games today. Yeah, and these, uh, these players have all set up a lot of classes. We, uh, we gave them a ton of time yesterday and today to set up what they want. Uh, I mean, it would be very hard to, uh, you know, know in advance exactly what class they're going to need in this tournament. And another scary thing playing in a tournament where there's so many diverse comps that can't appear and it being double elimination, 
you only get two shots, two losses, and you're out of the tournament. So let's go ahead to Complexity Red with their pick and their team captain, Soda. All right. Third pick of the draft is going to Soda. I'm going to go with him and find out who he's going with. Soda, third pick. Who do you want? I want Flex. He wants Flex. And there you have it for Complexity Red. Soda is going to pick up Flex, so taking that diverse player that we were talking about. So already, both of the DPS coming from Complexity Black being chosen in the first round. Yeah, and where Soda can play more than one healing class. I mean, look at how many comps they can build just with this, just with these two players. I mean, you name it, they throw a DK into it. Might be running Shadow Cleave, and of course, uh, as always, Beast Cleave being an option, throwing someone on a hunter, and I mean, still, that's going to be one of the comps that's really going to be, uh, one of the teams is going to be really scary to face, because you never really going to know, know what you're yeah. going to face until you zone into the arena. And with it being best of seven, these teams will have an option to change up their comps and specs after the second, fourth, and sixth map. So, in a single series, you can see up to three different comps. Yeah, I mean... Uh, a lot of players, or a lot of these captains, could be going the diversity route, like such as uh, Soda picking Flex. You know, you have so many different options right now. I mean, they could run WMD, they can run, I mean, we've seen Flex on a Warrior, a DK, an Enhancement Shaman. I mean, it goes on and on. So, our last pick for the first round is going to be the team of Button Bashers, and their captain being number one. One of the most fun priests to watch uh, so far this year. I mean, that guy is the most offensive priest I've seen in this game to date. And we were joking uh, at last event in Anaheim that it was a pretty much triple DPS team whenever Button Bash was oh, playing RMP. Yeah, and it was down to the wire triple DPS team, too. Like, you know, his, his whole team was under half life, including himself, and he's putting out damage. But that's how you have to play RMP sometimes. All right. And now, since we do have Snuts out of the pool, Twix and Flex, that still leaves a lot of people up for grabs here. Now, number one, we've only really seen him play a priest as far as the competitive games have gone. Now, we ha I've seen him in past tournaments running a little bit of different uh, comps. We have seen Destruction Warlocks coming out of Button Bashers and also number one on a Paladin. So, uh, But I still think he's going to be trying to build a team around the priest. Well, right now, he does have two picks in a row, I do believe. So he can, he's going to be the first person to, to basically finalize his team. So we're going to give him just a minute more, and he's going to have a big decision on his hand because he kind of gets to see what other teams are already starting to do. Not really finalizing just yet, but he's going to be able to pick out of this remaining pool and really go for exactly what he wants. And uh, I mean, the first team to finalize, I mean, this is big right now. Uh, he can kind of get an idea of, of who's been picked so far out of the other teams to try to give himself a, an idea of how to counter all these teams. I mean, obviously, they're not solidified yet. It's going to be tough, you know, picking what uh, Complexity Red is going to do. And one of the most popular questions we do have throughout the Asset Cast thread is, why is this comp not in? Why aren't we seeing this spec? <laughs> And I think this, this uh, All-Star Challenge is really going to shine and show people that there are some different things that will work in Arena. So let's head over to Ryan Moore and see what Button Bashers is going to go with. All right, I'm going over to number one with the fourth pick of the draft to find out who he's going with. Number one? I want Rekful. All right, he wants Rekful. He's going with Rekful. All right, there you have it. His first pick for Bud Bashers is going to be Wreckful. So already you see a little priest rogue synergy. And we can go ahead and assume that I think we might see Pooks in that. Yeah, one, in I have a feeling. He, Pooks is the one player out of all these guys here that has like a, a little connection going on with Button Batchers. I mean, we watched uh, Orange Mar Marmalade and Pooks play some twos together. Um, I know they duel all the time. Uh, so I have a feeling his next pick is going to be Pooks. It, I mean, you can't say it enough. If they end up going with Pooks, you have an RMP bringing basically three different strategies in. We've seen Complexity play RMP. SKUS back at Columbus, pretty much the most aggressive RMP in the game. Uh, that's really where they started their uh, their run of just basically winning tournaments and just doing great. And that was, of course, before the resilience change. And now we're going to mix in number one, one of the most offensive priests. I think if they do go with Pooks, it's going to be one of the fastest-paced RMPs we've seen yet. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, language barrier might be a little problem, but... Uh, I can only assume that they've been preparing for this, you know, knowing that this is, is going to happen, and number one will be the person picking the players. So uh, in RMP, once you get that strategy down, you can almost run it. Like there isn't too much, uh, you know, we're going to change our tactic halfway through the fight, you know, and discuss it. So uh, I think it's a solid pick for him to choose a uh, rogue and a mage. 
Yeah, and I'm going to be looking to the synergy of Recful and whatever they go with. I mean, that's one of the biggest things in a Rogue Mage Priest is looking at the synergy between the two DPS and a Priest being able to work in between those things. So, I mean, with the amount of games that number one's played as RMP, I can imagine that he can just see things unfolding and just go with it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give him just another minute. We'll be heading over to Ryan Moore in just a second with his next pick. And now it's really it's coming down to the wire. We're starting to get down to that last few players, and people are going to have to change up their thoughts. You can't just go for a set thing. And it's kind of interesting that Complexity Black, both members of their DPS being the first, chosen in the first round, not even a chance to see <laughs> them go too far. But, I mean, you can't really blame, especially Soda, for picking up Flex, as we said. Diversity being key in that first round pick whatever you don't know who's going to be left whenever it comes back around to. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to Azale this morning about it, trying to get a, an idea of how excited these players are for it. I mean, they, these players are pumped for this tournament. Um, and uh, he was saying that a lot of players might be running Cleave, but there are a few Cleave counters that players are looking to run. Yep. This is definitely going to be a very interesting tournament. And, you know, it's just, it's good fun. I, I know a lot of these players will be going for the $1,000. I mean, who wouldn't want to win when it comes down to it in the end? But Honestly, this tournament's more about these players just enjoying themselves and us to get to see something a little different. So let's go ahead and head back over to Ryan Moore with the next pick. All right, I'm going to go head over to number one and find out who he wants with his second pick in a row. Number one? Um, Reels. Ooh. Reels? All right, he's going with Reels. I do believe that that pick was Reels for the final pick. So that's going to be a little interesting. We have Wreckful known for playing a rogue. I did see him on a Warlock earlier. And now we have Reels, who we've seen in the past play a priest, a rogue, and a hunter. So I don't see double rogue priest coming out. So maybe a rogue hunter, which actually some people have been doing on live and, of course, have to throw a cleave name to it. Venom cleave, why not, I guess. I, you can't get away from it, apparently. So, I mean, uh, interesting choice. I just assumed that they were going to be going with the mage and just go with the standard RMP, but why not change things up whenever you have the chance? Maybe number one knows something we don't know <laughs> at this point. But no, we, we have seen Reels play a lot of different classes in tournaments so far. Um, plays them at a high caliber. Uh, so, I mean, they can do a lot of things, and we will never know what number one can play. <laughs> because, I mean, even though he is the healer picking because he was his, uh, his team's button basher's healer, it doesn't mean he has to play healer. And I don't even think we've brought it up yet, but coming into this tournament, uh, actually JP was talking with Orange Marmalade, they have played over 3,500 games preparing for this tournament. Now, most of you that play this game, go look at your stats, and I can almost guarantee you that you have not played that many arena games since Wrath came out. And these guys did it preparing for one tournament. So honestly, I'm not going to doubt or assume what uh, number one is going to do, because that guy could probably play everything at this oh, point. Yeah. But coming up next for our next pick, it is going to be Complexity Red, and that's uh, team captain of Soda making those decisions. Already picking up Flex, and honestly, I still think this is going to be the team that everyone's really going to be afraid of because Flex, you do not know what he's going to come out on. Yeah, I mean, he has so many different choices right now of, uh, to fill out the final spot in his roster. Um, we are going to wait for that full three minutes to make sure he can think it over. Um, but, I mean, what could you fill out at this point? You can pick almost anyone who's left in it. And also, Complexity Red will be one of the teams with four players, the other team being Skiji, that which did have the first pick. So we're going to be going back and forth through this. And I'm still, I, I, I wish I could just go talk to number one and see exactly what his train of thought was going through making those picks. You know he has something planned, especially being in that position of knowing you can finalize your roster first. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's actually taking notes right now, trying to, trying to guess what the other teams, I can only assume what the other teams can run at this point. And so even, and another big thing to note as well, Orange Marmalade probably considered the best, if one of the best players in World of Warcraft out there and did not go in the first round. Yeah, it's, um, I have a feeling though the reason why these people, if you looked at all the first picks, they were either the MS class or the person who can play very diverse, you know. So, you know, one with the rogues, the, the warriors, the, the enhancement shamans, the hunters, something like that. So they're MS first so let's go ahead and head over to Ryan Moore with our next pick. All right, next up, I'm going to be going with Soda to find out who he wants with his next pick. Soda, who are you going with? I, uh, I choose Pooks. Soda's picking up Pooks. Pooks. 
All right, there you have it. Soda's third pick is, or second pick is going to be Pooks. So now you have Flex and Pooks set up for your DPS. And remember, he will get one more member being that four-man team. So Flex and Pooks, just kind of go ahead and make an, uh, uh, assumptions. You're looking at an Enhancement Shaman and a Mage, which people have made work on live, and it is a very annoying comp to play against, specifically for melee-based cleaves. Yeah, and it's... Uh and that's what I was saying. They are getting ready for those uh, those cleave counters because that's probably at, at this level where you have to throw players together quickly. Cleave is definitely the the go-to comp where you know there isn't there's a lot of strategy in cleave. I'm not saying it's you know there isn't anything to do, but um, stick a target and kill it. It isn't that hard. You know it's going to play a lot of pressure on your healer, keeping up obviously, but. Um, being able to counter that is a great idea, and Soto was looking to do that. Well, I mean, already we're seeing why players, and I, honestly, us here at the Gottfrag staff, are getting excited about this tournament, because with two teams basically picking up their first three and kind of looking towards what they're going to be running, it's not anything that we're used to seeing at these tournaments. Not at all. And I'm glad that we made the rule that you couldn't pick your own team, because... You know, we're going to see players that... I, I do know a lot of players have transferred to BlackRock, and so they have been playing together on teams. And, you know, quite possibly some of these teams have played together on live, or certain members of it. Um, but, you know, then we have the, the team of Button Bashers, or number one, choosing uh, two totally different players. Yep. It's going to be very interesting. So our next pick will be Complexity Black, which, of course, is a team formerly known as Check Six. Uh, that is Toes making the decisions there. And he's already picked up Snuts, known for playing a Warlock or a DK. So maybe we're going to see a little Shadow Cleave set up. We do have a Zale still available in the pool. So I think we might be seeing a, a kind of a normal setup there. But who knows if it goes as it's been going so far. It won't be anything that we assume. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they have, they have a lot of he has a lot of different choices right now. Um, I mean, there's still a big pool of players left. Obviously, Azale has played Warrior before um, and Warlock. So, I mean, they can run lots and lots of stuff with those two players so far. So, just now looking at it, and we do have Complexity Red with its three out of four players. Button Bashers making their decision with their three-man roster. Between those two teams... <laughs> well, we don't even know what, uh, what number one's going to run yet. So, um, we'll have to see maybe if it is that... Uh, that rogue hunter, mate, or rogue hunter priest. We're not sure. I mean, <laughs> I can't wait for the first game. All right, let's go ahead and head back over to Ryan Moore with our next pick. All right, I'm gonna go with Toes on the uh, seventh pick of the MLG All Star Draft. Toes, who are you going with? I'm gonna go with Vinruki. He's going with Vinruki. Vinruki. All right, and there you hear it. Just as uh, we are completely wrong all the way through, it is going to be Ben Ruki for his next pick. So you have Snuts playing a lock, and then Ben Ruki, mostly known for his mage play. Already a, a little wizard cleave maybe mm -hmm. going down here? That's what I'm seeing. And now Toza smiling at us, so either we're <laughs> completely right or we're completely wrong. So, you know, we've seen it in the past, and everyone's seen it on live. I think it's pretty much one of the most hated things that really rose up this season, and that, of course, being... Wizard Cleave, where you have two casters set up and generally a Paladin or a Shaman, Lust or a Aura, that just makes them blow somebody up. No MS necessary. Let's just both channel into one target and make things go away. All right, so that so we have two teams that are completely locked in right now. Number one's team, um, and now we have Toza's team completely picked. So I do believe coming up next, we will have two picks from G to finalize their four-man roster and then leaving that last pick to Complexity Red. So in just a few minutes here, we'll have the rosters locked down. And like we said earlier, we're going to take a short commercial break right after these picks are finalized. Let these players get to their PCs, and then we're going to go right into the action. And this, of course, will be double elimination, best of seven. So we're going to go all the way through it today and leave all of the championship for tomorrow on Sunday. All right, so uh, Collective right now has few seconds remaining to uh, discuss. It looks like he's talking to Ryan Moore right now and uh, looking at the list of players that are still available. Um, what do you think he's going to pick? <laughs> well, you already, like we said, you already have Twix, you know, playing BM Hunter. He has MS. So, you know, in the traditional style of things, MS, caster, healer. That's kind of what you're looking at. But, I mean, we still have a lot of great players left in the pool. And as you said earlier, Azale playing a warrior and a warlock. I, I've even, even seen him on a DK in the past. I you can kind of throw one of those, any of those three classes into that mix and do pretty well. And it even brings up the discussion of maybe Azale will come in on Prot Warrior and uh, bring up 
pretty much one of the most controversial things right now, of course. The number one team on one of the most aggressive BGs out there, right now being Mark's Hunter, Prop Warrior, Paladin. Which is something they could run, you know, if they do pick up his ale. And they also have that fourth pick still. So uh, not only can they run, could they run that uh, Prot Warrior Hunter combo, they have an entirely different setup that they can run. Yeah. And honestly, throughout this tournament, I, I do believe we're going to see most of these teams kind of swap it up because this is one of the opportunities where we kind of go back to the old days of competitive WoW where there was a lot of counter comping, trying to assume what this team was going to run, do we try to counter comp it, and then it was just back and forth. There was an entire meta game to WoW Arena whenever it first came around. And I do believe players will take advantage of that. But let's go ahead and head over to Ryan Moore with our next pick. All right. Eighth pick of the draft. I'm going over to Collective to see who he's going with. Collective, who are you going with? Hiran. Hiran, the rogue. Hiran. All right, there you hear it. It's going to be Hiran, one of the players from Button Bashers going on to that team. So once again, things are changing up. Now we have two teams with two people that can run both Rogue and Hunter. So I, it'll be interesting to see, but like we said, Button Bashers being the team where it's very unknown what all they have in their arsenal. With that many games played, there's no telling how many different teams they have played, how many different comps, and here and being an amazing Rogue already, Twix we know mainly sticks to Hunter. So we expect to see a Hunter in some way, shape, or form, and then here and on Rogue, it might go back to that Venom Cleave setup. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we know Collective uh, plays Shaman primarily. We've seen him on some other healers here and there, um, but he does have that fourth pick still. Collective, uh, he's been regarded as one of the best Shamans out there for quite a while now. Uh, not having a lot of success recently in tournaments, but, I mean, like we said, it's fun in this All-Star Challenge. It's giving everybody a little bit of a different chance to try things out, and it's going to be just insane once these gates finally open for both of these teams just wondering what the other's going to be running. So not very many players left to pick so far. So we have two teams that are completely solidified and uh, have all their picks done. So and I do believe we have three picks left. So yep, mm. they're going to have just a couple more minutes here. Uh, I do believe it's going to be SK or Ski G with uh, with their fourth member being picked, and Azale still not picked up yet. I'm kind of surprised. I thought he was going to be one of the earlier picks. Yeah, because and that's what we we're assuming. The players that can play many different classes are the ones that would have been picked first, but it looks like all these uh, these captains have a game plan coming into it. And speaking of it, no orange marmalade picked up yet. Oh, I know. What's going on here? I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be very interesting once the gates do open. And don't forget, all the action throughout this weekend will be available in HD. Make sure you check out the WoW Weekend Pass for $10. You will get both days of action, the All-Star Challenge and Championship Sunday with that 1.7 megabyte stream that does have that amazing rewind functionality, which we were, we were talking about nonstop last tournament, watching Button Bashers with some of their insane openers and swaps. It'll give you the opportunity to be able to pause, rewind, and check out the action step by step, which something that which we, is going to be needed. <laughs> yeah, those guys, they definitely pull things off just amazingly well. And it's really easy once you do sign up for the HD, just a couple clicks away and you'll be right into it. So it looks like we're going to go ahead into our next pick. All right, I'm going to go over to Collective again and see who, see who he wants for his last pick of the draft. Collective, who are you going with? Orange Marmalade. And there you hear it. Orange is picked up by Ski G. So rounding out that team, you have both members of Button Bashers joined by Twix and Collective. I think it was a smart move, actually. I think the, the synergy of Rogue Mage and Rogue Mage Priest is huge for that team. Um, and to get both players on one team, it, it was a great pick by Collective. Uh, we already know the synergy between Heron and Orange Marmalade is there. Now we just have to kind of see Will Collective end up putting both of them in? I mean, they have that opportunity with a fourth member just to throw a wrench into things. Most people will assume that we'll see Rogue Mage come out. Collective, even not really known for playing a priest, Rogue Mage, Shaman, the synergy's still there between the Rogue and Mage. And with the aggression that we've seen between those two players, Bloodlust definitely would put a mix into it as well. But still, nothing is decided yet. I can guarantee you, with this little break they'll have, they're going to talk things over and just try to come up with some different strats. Because like we said, with a best of seven, these teams will have the opportunity to change comps, specs, anything, after that second, fourth, and sixth game. So up to three different comps can be run in a single series. 
All right, so you know we're down to the uh, the last pick, which surprisingly, it's going to be a zale. Uh, com oh, complexity red. Two more. One more. Complexity red will have that one more that last pick, and I do believe a zale will be yeah. the last player available. So, ah, oh, poor zale being the last pick. But there's so many great players here that it isn't like, you know, they were like, ah, oh, Zale's the worst player here. We're picking him last. Still doesn't matter. No, nobody likes being the big kid in dodgeball. Nobody. So we're going to go ahead over to Ryan Moore, and we'll finalize this draft. All right. Last pick of the draft goes to Soda, so I'm going to find out who he's going with. Soda? Azale. He's picking up Azale. Azale to end the draft. And that will do it. There you hear Complexity Red picking up Azale. And now we're going to have to come up with some new team names for these, uh, for these teams because, as you see, everything's been chopped up. Players are on different teams, different faces. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this unfolds. Don't forget, we're live here in Orlando with the All-Star Challenge. We'll be right back after a short commercial break going right into the games. Do you want to be at the top of your